Hey everyone and welcome to Photoshop Pro Help and today I'm going to be teaching this really cool retro Lomo effect. Now if you don't know what Lomography is, basically it's a style and is also a photographic movement. Now it's basically an image that has a high contrast and a distinct vignette as well as a cross processed colour tint to it. Now this all sounds very difficult and stuff like that but it's really easy to create in Photoshop and you can also buy Lomo cameras that actually create this effect for you. But with those cameras you sort of get a grainy and not very good quality picture with itself. Now if you do this in Photoshop you get a really nice high quality image as well as the effect itself. So with the image you want to work with, now you want to throw all your photo uh, photography skills out the window. Basically you want something really strange, weird, something you wouldn't take a picture of normally. And you want to basically turn it on its side, change the angle and make sure it's a little bit blurry. So once you have got your image that you want to work with, um, we're going to go and jump into Photoshop here. Now this is the original I'm working with. If you don't have an image that you want to work with, you can get this image here and uh, that's going to be in the link in below with a few other things uh, to create this effect. So you might want to go download those from my website and stuff like that. So first of all, we're going to go and press Ctrl and J on our keyboard to duplicate that said image. And all we're going to do now is go up to the lasso tool, and which is on the left hand side. And we're going to put at the top the featherness to 70 pixels. So make sure you've got that. And we're just going to go and draw roughly around it. You don't have to be precise because that's not where, what we're aiming for, sorry. So just like that. And from here we're going to go up to select. And we're going to go to inverse. And all we're going to do now is play around with the adjustments, adjustment layers. So go to the bottom right hand side. You'll see this little circle that's black and white. Click that. And we're going to go up to levels. Now from here I'm not going to give you precise um, details of the sort of things you're going to input like you know I'm not going to give you all the numbers and stuff because each set you're going to have to do on your own manually because each image will work out different. So I'm going to tell you about the sort of styles that you need to make and you can make the judgement whether it looks right on your image. So from here we're just going to go and drag this black slider along to the right and all this is doing is making the outside darker and the inside of the selection um, light so we're going to get that nice golden effect on the outside so you want something to around about there so make sure your images are sort of like that you need to play around with them as I said from there we're going to go back to the adjustment layers and we're going to go to curves now from here we're going to make a slight S uh, curve so you might want to pause this um, once I've done the actual curve and you can replicate it on your image so we're just going to drag this over here and up here just drag that out like that that's pretty okay now pause this have a look at it and you can play around with your image to get the sort of same effect now once you have done that, we're going to close that, we're going to go back to the adjustment layers and all we're going to do is we're going to go to color balance. Now from here, um, you can put the things I'm going to put in, uh, but you don't have to, play around with them. Best of all, put the things I'm putting in, like the measurements, and if it doesn't suit your image, go back along and just adjust them so they're all okay. So for the first one, which is cayenne, cayenne or whatever. Um, so, uh, we're going to go and put minus 28. And the next one, we're going to go and put uh, around about 24, should be okay for that. And the next one, which is going to be minus 23. and then we're going to go to shadows now the top one is going to be minus 56 the next one is going to be minus 9 and the one after that is going to be minus 13 
and then we're going to go and drop down and go to highlights now the top one is going to be 32 so let's have a look sorry wrong way around there we go and then we're going to go and put uh, 16 minus 16 sorry and the next one is also going to be 16 so once you have done that we're going to go and close that now from here we're going to go and make a new blank layer to the bottom right hand side click that button and we're just going to go and fill this black so we're going to go to the paint bucket tool click that click our image from here we're going to go and change the blending option to hue so let's go and find that in our drop down menu and we're going to drop the opacity to around about let's just go down a bit to around about there should do that'd be okay so that's going to be about 22 on here but as i said play around with the option you really need to uh, adjust it to what you think's best so once you have done that we're going to go and make a new blank layer fill that with black and we're going to go up to uh, sorry filter we're going to go up to render and we're going to go up to lens flare now we're going to go and put 105mm prime and we're going to set the brightness to 83% and we're just going to move this to the top left hand corner now you don't actually have to put this in your image but this works well with this image so you really need to play around with it um, you can try it in your image and then delete if it doesn't work so we're going to go and click OK and we're going to go and change the blending option to screen and we're going to go to the move tool on the left hand side and we're just going to move this up to where we want it and from here we're going to go and duplicate that um, layer again so control and J and we're just going to bring the opacity down a tad and we're just going to move that layer just up a notch just uh, above it and then bring the opacity down again just there should do so around about 69% uh, percent opacity should be okay for that now once you have uh, done that all we're going to do now is we need to sharpen the image so we're going to go and select all of our layers that we need so we've got layer 1 and then all the adjustment layers and the black layers selected and all we're going to do is press Control and J and that duplicates them and they're all selected all the ones that are duplicated so then we're going to go and right click and we're just going to go and merge layers now from here all we're going to do is go to filter we're going to go to sharpen and then we're going to go to unsharpen mask now we want to put 50 for the top one and we're just going to bring the radius up to around about 22 should be okay. let's just put that at 22 and the threshold is going to be 0 and then once that's done click OK let it render and there we go that's basically the finished uh, product but first of all we can get a even better effect if we add a few other things now you can leave it here if you want to but I suggest uh, making a scrunched paper effect to go with it so let's go over to my scrunched paper image here now you can also download this from my website we're gonna go and drag and drop and we're just going to bring this over so it fits the whole of the image and we're going to go and click the tick icon at the top and we're going to go and change the blending mode to multiply now that pretty, that's pretty well, that's pretty good now we can bring the opacity down a slight tad because that's a little bit too much so around about there should be okay so that's about 64 percent 
And there you have it. That's the full retro Lomo effect for your pictures, which is really good. It's an old effect, and it works really well. So go and try this. See what sort of styles you can create. As I said, play around with the numbers and the adjustments. And even you can even just put this paper in your picture if you want to, to create that added extra effect onto the Lomo so please work out with it please comment rate and subscribe and i'll see you next time guys bye for now